Hello everyone. Um, welcome. Welcome to my uh, my small box room here at, at home, which uh, is probably a familiar, uh, well, not this particular one, but probably a familiar scenario to uh, to lots of you that are here today. Um, it's great to, to have you all here and, and brilliant to have such a great turnout today, actually. It's, um, it's uh, it, I'm sure a lot of you are suffering from Zoom fatigue. So actually to, to have the numbers that we've got here um, on this uh, at this event is fantastic. So thank you very much. Um, and it's also um, having a look at the delegate list. Um, it's also brilliant to have a, a pan-European audience, which is which is fantastic. So I guess it shows um, the appeal of the subject and also um, how um, how far-reaching both the chamber and and Carswell Gould has in terms of the contacts um, and the influence that it has. Um, in that global market as well. Um, so I'll just start by a couple of bits of housekeeping. Um, you'll probably see in the top left-hand corner of the screen, a little uh, head and shoulders icon. Um, and if you click that, if it's not already open, you'll, you'll see that that opens the public chat. Um, and um, we want this to be a very kind of lively, interactive event. And although um, you, we can't hear you verbally on, on here, we want uh, people to, to comment and add questions as much as possible throughout the, the event. Um, also, um, if you'll see on the presentation, the, in the top right hand corner, there's a little button to hide the presentation. So if you've uh, if you're feeling you, you're having death by PowerPoint, you can you can kill that, and uh, God forbid you'd, you'd see the, the presenter's uh, full face on the full screen. So uh, be wary of that. Um, and also in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a download little arrow above a, a line, um, so you can download this uh, this presentation and keep and uh, view it at a later date as well. So there's a couple of things there as well. Um, and of course, you know, if you've got any questions, we've got um, we've got Sam from Vostron, who's our technology partner online now. So in public chat, if you uh, if you have any pro technical problems, then uh, bung a message in technical chat, and we can we can sort you out there as well. So um, oh, the other thing to mention is this uh, session is being recorded. Um, so what we'll do, um, don't worry if you if you miss any vital bits of information that uh, that you hear. Um, we'll send out this at a later date as well um, to everyone that, that said that um, they're, they're here as, as delegates. Um, so you can view that at your leisure at a later date as well. So um, so hopefully that's all the housekeeping covered. Um, but uh, but like I say, if you've got any questions, put it in the in the public chat. Um, I should introduce myself, really. Um, my name's Gareth Miller. Um, I'm wearing two hats today. Um, one is as a member of the leadership group for the Southampton Chamber of Commerce, um, but also I, I must declare my interest. I'm also ND at Carswell Gould. So um, it's um, it's one of these events that I've been particularly looking forward to. Um, and um, and you'll hear from me at the start briefly, but also in the Q&A session as well. Um, so in terms of the chamber, um, the chamber is part of the Hampshire Chamber of Commerce, as you can see on the logo it was something that um timing is a, is a wonderful thing and it, it the southampton chamber is kind of reborn um in in southampton um to focus on on the business community and the connections that southampton has and make it relevant for southampton businesses and, and champion the city as the true kind of world um uh, connected uh, commerce um center that it is um, we're, we're very lucky of the types of businesses that we have in the city and the connections that we have both uh, digitally and physically. And also, you know, being famous for being a port city, um, its, uh, it's connections with the wider world uh, uh, are amazing. Um, the chamber, like I say, it, it exists to support the, the businesses in the city, but also promote Southampton as um, a world class destination to, to base your business. So um, it's the chamber that have brought this um, to being um, at the at the launch of of the Southampton Chamber, um, COVID nineteen happened. Um, so we thought immediately, what can we do to um, to offer something to members and the wider business community of value? Um, and that was this Chamber of Solutions, the Southampton series, and it's covered things like HR, mental toughness, planning, budgeting, fundraising, all that kind of stuff. And this one obviously is a particular focus on marketing communications so um and actually you know we're really proud that this has got the um, the largest audience so marketing communications 
vital subject at this particular time um, and hopefully you'll go away from this session um, having something that um, I value and um, arm to uh, to take that forward and, and get your business really um, really growing and, and kind of coming out of this current situation that we're in. Um, so if I move on to the next slide, if I just take control of the, the presentation, which I'm not at the moment, so bear with me. Here we go. Um, so I mentioned Vostron. Vostron's the technology partner for the series. Um, you're all experiencing this tool at the moment. Um, it was described to me as a, a virtual event conference center. Um, so it's a much more sophisticated way of holding these types of meetings than um, than something like Zoom um, and allows the, the user to have a, a lot more flexibility. So um, if you want to know more, then check out Vostron. Also, our uh, our other partner in this is Go Southampton. So uh, Go Southampton is the, the, the bid in the Southampton city centre. Um, and I, I assume that a number of you that are here today are contacts of theirs or levy payers for the, the, for the Southampton bid, Go Southampton. Um, so thank you to them for um, getting the word out to their, their members as well. Obviously, most importantly, and I would say that considering my role, Carswell Gould. Um, Carswell Gould is a, an amazing agency that's based in Southampton. Um, it's, it may be based in Southampton and then kind of echoing what I was saying about the city as, as itself. Um, Carswell Gould has a, a global portfolio of clients. Um, we've got clients as far afield as, uh, as California, uh, Italy, Portugal, and a number of clients in Holland as well, as well as across the UK. Um, but, you know, we've got a strong base in the South Coast as well. So, um, so re a truly global reach. Um, we're, we're an unashamed integrated marketing communications agency. And I say unashamed because there was a time that we were having conversations with people and they were saying, well, why aren't you a, a, a social media specialist for education or, you know, something very, very specialist, but our strength comes in strategy. We start at the end, we understand what, our clients uh, are trying to achieve and then we prescribe the right tools to get them to that point and actually what you'll hear a little later on from from ed is about how some of those tools work and also what are the right moves that you can make in this current climate to get um to get going again and get the marketing really working really strongly so yeah a southampton based agency um We've got a team of, of, of specialists across um, across the dis different disciplines. Some of on some of them are on the call today, so um, so I'm sure hopefully you'll interact with uh, with some of them later on in the chat. Um, very importantly, we want you to help shape this session. So you will all have received an email um, from um, the guys at the chamber encouraging you to to come and fill in a survey. We'll talk more about that later on, but if you haven't done that already then please can you there's a link that i've put in the chat on the left hand side so go and do that quickly it won't take you two minutes um but what you put in there will be really useful and really um, vital to help shape how this conversation goes um i keep pressing my keyboard i need to click on there um and also you know like i say we want it to be really interactive lots of talk lots of things um being discussed in the chat um that's the, the the public forum um and also you know i wouldn't be in marketing if i wasn't going to encourage you to like and share and talk about it on social media please you know use our our, our at and also the hashtag new world marketing to get involved with that out on social media as well so please uh, please do that um as i mentioned earlier we've got a number of experts online um in this in this forum um to offer um advice and guidance and answer questions about particular subjects. Uh, Rob is our art director, so anything on design, UX, creative, he, he's your man. Uh, Bex is our uh, head of PR, so anything on comms, PR, social, um, Bex can give you um, some really good insight there. Hannah is our expert inbound and digital, so Hannah's online at the moment, as you can see she's already putting things on the chat, so please, um, please ask questions of that nature and hopefully Hannah will be able to help you out there. And Giuseppe, who um, like I was saying, South, um, Southampton is is our base, but we're, we've got a global reach. Giuseppe's based in Sicily, and he's our lead um, web developer. So um, so Giuseppe's online now and can can answer some of those particular questions as well and get involved in that way. A um, couple of pictures of, of me and Ed. Um, you've probably seen enough of me because I'm 
chatting away in the top corner, but there's me with a post lockdown haircut. Um, but I, I tend to get involved more in the strategy planning um, and um, and that kind of side of things. And, and my my partner in crime at Cars with Gold is, is Ed, our creative director. So uh, he's the big ideas man. Uh, our clients really, really value the input he get, gives and the ideas that he comes up with to help drive them forward and grow their business. Um, but at this point, it's probably best for me to to stop talking uh, for a little bit um, and hand over to Ed. So the, the, the idea now going forward is an introduction to newer marketing by Ed. Then we'll have this open Q&A session, but don't hold back during Ed's talk as well. Um, and then ultimately, we want you to leave with new ways of making good things happen. So we should, um, what we talk about now should arm you with some really good ideas um, that obviously we want you to come back and talk to us about but hopefully you'll have enough to um, to go away and, and actually um, start making good things happen at your business. So I will hand over now to Ed, um, who will uh, who will take over and talk you through New World Marketing. And here he is. Hello everyone. Um, I thought I'd be really clever and set up in a beautiful space, and now there's a thunderstorm. So um, if it gets noisy, someone send me a message, but I'm gonna, give it a good go. So thank you for joining us. And Gareth, thank you for that uh, introduction. A lot to live up to within that introduction. Um, what we're uh, talking about today is, is a methodology, really. Um, it's a methodology that was born out of crisis. Um, and as an agency that's been around for 30 years, we've been to a few, um, just like many of the businesses. And I can see all the businesses' names coming up on the chat. And I recognize some of you We've all got different challenges and we've all got um, different things to overcome, but one thing uh, remains the same. If we do nothing, we, we lose momentum. And it was through that lens that at the beginning of the, the COVID crisis, we sat down with our team, um, clients, um, collaborators and partners that we work with to try and work out a few smart moves that we and our clients could make right now that would both get them through this bit at the moment and also give them sustainability, sustainability uh, long time term. And what I'm going to try to do today and what the guide talks about is some key aspects of that methodology. Um, and it really starts from the, the, the point, I'm going to look down a lot as well because I can't use my keyboard without doing that. It really starts from the point of view of getting back to basics. And as, as, a, as a marketeer that has always been completely integrated in, in my approach, it's really getting back to grasp where we are as organizations and where our customers are. Uh, and a big part of the work that we recommend that you individually go and do is to do that review work. And what happened, what we noticed happening at the beginning of this crisis is everyone was reviewing everything, but it was through the lens of uh, an emergency. Do it again. And now the emphasis on that review is less about that FD um, champion that, and more about the people that are actually gonna get us out of this, the marketeers and the salespeople, saying, what are we able to do now? What can we practically do now, um, given that many of us are at home, many of us are all over the place, and getting back to basics and doing that review was really the starting point. And any marketeer worth the salt will put their customers right at the center of that conversation. And a really nice piece of content from the Harvard Business Review, which I think Hannah's going to drop into the chat so you can dig into it in more detail, um, looked at the last uh, financial crash and looked at how customers react to um, crisis. And broadly, they, they sort of came up with these four groups. And maybe you can decide which you fall into. Um, when, when things go wrong, people either slam on the brakes they're not going to be spending much. The pained but patient customer is another segment. The comfortably well-off consumer, which maybe isn't too worried and is able to make tactical purchases. And then the live for today, which is, you know, let, let's crack on. And actually, one of the questions we asked you guys at the beginning as part of that research to try and help shape what we were doing was to try and actually look at where you guys were. So let, let's have a look at where we've got to and uh, what I might just do is refresh that because Gareth just gave it a nice little push and uh, here you go you winners you've got 80% of you are neutral 
you're not sure you want to get back to things bit by bit. We've got 13% of you being very excited, desperate to get down the pub. And there's still 6% of us feeling worried. Now, this isn't a scientific test. This was just us trying to frame that even within the delegation, even within you on this call, people are at different stages. And, and that's happening to your customers right at the moment. And, and trying to get a, a grasp of that and understanding where they are is key to be able to do what we believe is the most important point, reset and develop a new strategy. So how can you do that in an easy way? Well, one really simple way to do that is to just check back across your customer personas. Within your marketing strategy, your business strategy, look to your marketing guys and say, where's that pack of personas? And they might look a bit like um, this sort of thing. Here's Clark, who's a software developer, and this was, this was for another project. What personas allow us to do is take a very broad view of our customer segments uh, and create imaginary uh, personas for those. And that helps shape the communications that you create. Now, why that's really important, and loads of people, loads of marketers do, do personas. Very few review it against the current climate. Now, that current climate at the moment has COVID in it. It's going to have recession in it, potentially. But there's all sorts of things that might affect Clark Andrews here and his ability to give you his money or uh, be a customer of yours. So taking time to review that now is key. And if you haven't got them, what a great exercise to do. And you can do it remotely. And again, there's going to be a link to this template. You can just take it away and have a go. Try and build out your own customer personas if you haven't got them already. Start building those out and considering where they sit uh, in terms of where they are at the moment. Use research. Talk to your sales team. Talk to your marketeers. Look at your CRM. Look at how they're they're buying and build up that picture because it's it's really important that you've got a starting point and once you've got that it can fuel the communications that you create i'm gonna have to run through these fairly quickly so do ask questions and the guys will answer in chat if need be so once you've worked out where you are in the world as a business once you've had that conversation between the fd and the owners and the marketing team and said okay we do need to do something the question is, what budget have you got? And one of the other, before I move on to digital, one of the other questions we asked about, um, it was about budgets. And I think it's an important one just to, just to touch on. So I'm just going to go back to that presentation quickly. At the beginning of this crisis, contrary to what you're going to see on the slides now, which is probably more um, relevant for the delegation you've got, but in our plant base, we saw one of two things. People slam on the brakes and cut costs straight away and just say, we're not doing any marketing. And others that said, we're going to plow on and we're going to look at how we use that money more effectively. So when we've gone out to you guys, I can see that on the whole, people are saying, look, the budget stayed the same. That could be because no one's reset that and thought about that strategy. But what we're saying to our clients and to every single person that we're talking to at the moment, some very worried about how they're actually going to generate the, the, the custom that they need is, Whatever you do, keep momentum going. Inertia kills your business. Now, Gartner said uh, 2019, 9.5% average spend. 9.5% of revenue is the average marketing budget. How many of you, if you think about that now, feel that if you manage the marketing budget, that's representative? Or indeed, if you're in charge of finance, something that you agree with. But that is the number from a research by someone other than me, so it must be true. So I put it to you that no matter how small your target revenue is for this year, if you think that your business has been absolutely slammed by this, then recalculate it, but keep five to 10% of that for communications. It's really important because otherwise everything seizes up and the wheels of industry will uh, stop, quite honestly. So once you've established what that budget is, once you've established what your what your customers need and those customer segments need how are you going to deploy that and what was key for this uh, methodology is is a, a focus almost entirely on digital comms now since the beginning of covid multinationals we've seen a huge investment in digital transformation so 
that's not just from a marketing perspective, but a big part of that play is within communications, um, um, business insight, uh, web, and also systems that run the infrastructure of those organizations. And one of the driving factors was that is nothing highlights the benefit of technology uh, like this, like what we're doing right now. Um, and shifting all of those efforts to digital early was a really good move that a lot of the clients uh, we work with made. And it's paid dividends in the sense that they were able to use their own channels, so their websites, their social. They were able to keep communicating when their FDs were saying, I'm not sure how much money we've got to spend on that, or as budgets were reduced in some instances. So shifting efforts towards doing what we always should have done, focusing on digital, not because it's the future, but because it's now, it's the imperative. Making sure that all of your teams, all of your staff understand how to use your systems and also on making sure that you've got a clear strategy of how you're going to engage with your customer base through those channels. If you've still got a Facebook page just because you've got a Facebook page, you're pre-COVID, <laughs> to be quite honest. And coming out the other end, there needs to be a clear view of what you're actually using that for. So shifting efforts and spend towards digital is really important. And a big part of that shift is, um, is a focus on inbound marketing. Now, if you don't know what inbound marketing is, a quick uh, overview, um, basically it's a methodology. There's lots of different pieces of software, but inbound marketing uh, makes your content super findable. So your customer segment can find your assets online, they come into your site, and then you nurture those leads into uh, marketing qualified leads and then onto sales qualified leads using technology. So there's lots of different types of technology you can use. We're a HubSpot partner, but we also work on Marketo, um, uh, various, other, various other tools. And, and the key to this is even if you can't, if, even if you can't afford or you're not willing or you can't get it through uh, budgets in terms of setting up a new piece of technology, the principles of impact marketing are really valuable at the moment because they do a number of things that will be attractive to any business. One, they uh, really use your own channels in a strong way. Two, they nurture every single person and they build your CRM out and they give you intelligence of what the people are looking at and what they're interested in. Three, they drive a discipline. I've put four fingers up, but three, they drive a discipline for your marketing teams and your marketing function to churn out on the money digital campaigns that make sense uh, to your customer base because you'll be able to see the measurement using these tools. And four, five, four, one of my favorite ones is, um, uh, yeah, I can't see you, but pretend to put your hand up if, if you're in marketing and pretend to put your hand up if you've experienced the seemingly strange divide between sales and marketing. What things like HubSpot do or can do is bring those functions together so that the marketing team are, are tooling up your sales team with intelligence so that your conversion rates increase. Now, in a time that if you agree with us over the next one year, maybe more, things are gonna be tight. Every single opportunity needs the best chance of success. And that's why we put inbound and digital at the center of new world marketing. Now, if you want to dig into that more, I think the team are gonna drop some links again to some further reading on this. It's a big subject. The other thing that um, Hannah, who's online, has offered is if anyone wants to have a free look at what we use in terms of HubSpot, just, just shout. It's not a problem. I'm aware of time, and I realize this is a whistle stop, but we will continue past inbound marketing to look at what that actually helps with. So being responsive to the dynamic changing forces that are happening outside. You know, if in two weeks' time we get a, the R rate goes up, schools go back, uh, the opening of shops, which is happening now. Each of these stages are creating a change in behavior. Each of these stages are, will have an impact on your ability to effectively communicate with your, with your market. 
you'll have to adjust it. So measuring everything is key. Now, if you haven't got um, big inbound marketing software like HubSpot, or you haven't got um, detailed measurement things, you can still do things. You've got Google Analytics for free for a start. And you can also use polls. You can also use questionnaires. But trying to stay in front or as close to the mark as possible with what's happening in the world and its effect on your customers will enable you to put out timely communications through your own digital channels that actually mean something and actually resonate with your audience rather than just saying we're open, have a bit more thought into that. So I think that this measurement piece is really important and get someone within your team to own that. Um, decide the frequency of that measurement. It could be that in your sector, you need to go weekly to try and take a view on how things are going. Um, and you might decide to use uh, research into what's happening in the outside world and your marketing channels. You might feel that actually, as we do, once a month, keeping an eye on how people are engaging that at the moment is fine for us. But if there's not a measurement piece within your marketing function at the moment, you're a little bit rudderless. The other part that inbound and digital allows you to do really well but you can do this just as, as an ethos within your organizations nurture every connection that you've got each and every one of you that's down the side of here cactus simon brilliant blue autism hampshire brian uh, davenport uh, thank you all for coming and we hope this won't be the last time that we speak whoever you are and whatever you do what we're able to do through this is start a conversation with you um, and actually, uh, just to be completely open, the bits of information you gave us there, although they're absolutely um, uh, anonymous, um, it helps us get a view of, of how this audience and this delegation is feeling um, to the matter of marketing. So what are you doing in your organisation to do that? How are you continuing that conversation and supplying the right information at the right time to your customers to nurture them for them to re remember you. Now, one of the big problems at the moment, which we go into in the, the longer document on this, is that you may not be able to sell anything to your customers at the moment. That might be the reality. So option one, don't say anything until they're ready. Option two, nurture, pay it forward, create communications and help them. And I'll come on to that in a bit more in a moment. But the idea of nurturing everybody that you've got on your books and working that CRM as hard as possible is born out of a few things. One, you're probably at home in your kitchen. You can still access your CRM. Focus on the things you can do now. Don't focus on all the stuff like live events and my, and my outdoor media. And you know, Let's worry about what we can control. And I'm sure that your strategy will evolve as things change, just like the ideas within um, New World Marketing will evolve as well. But these starting points really allow us to get going without much uh, spend or worry because we're using assets we've already got in a lot of cases. So moving on from nurturing every connection, campaigns, digital in the box, uh, sorry, make a digital campaign in the box. So we were working with one of our clients um, long before and this was started to be developed out of a need for that's a multinational company. It's got marketing people in different countries. And what we needed to develop is a way of um, tooling them up with consistent creative campaigns. At the beginning of this uh, COVID problem, suddenly these went into overdrive. And they went into overdrive for a number of reasons. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. Um, what they effectively are is just a way of presenting a campaign. But what they do differently to previously, and I'm just going to share a screen with you guys a second to give you a bit of a closer look. What they effectively do on one page is sum up a few things succinctly. They sum up what the main aim of the campaign is and what it is that the business needs to focus on in terms to get a return. What the key messages are and what the secondary messaging is to be able to get that to happen. The other important ingredients of a campaign in a box is the campaign mechanisms. What's the point of having a smart message if you're not asking the recipient or the user to do anything with it? So it sets them out. And then we use the ingredients that come from here to build out all of the communications, adverts, email marketing, 
uh, downloads, various different things. Now, no matter what the campaign, this is a great one for a brilliant company called Meechers that the guys were working on recently. And again, it's the same focus. That doesn't mean the campaigns are the same or the messaging is the same, but what this process has allowed us as a creative team to develop, and the reason I'm sharing it with you to give you an idea, is it very quickly and efficiently works out what you need to say and it makes sure that our, you have every single element of, um, of ammo that you need to take that message to market. And that could be deployed from this point on by any number of people. And actually the majority of our work is about tooling up uh, teams that are all over the place with the right assets and the right, um, the right board. So, I would suggest to, if there's creatives on the call, which I can see there are, take the examples, I think Han's gonna drop them in, and just see if that same flow of thinking about the ingredients of an effective digital campaign help you shape those campaigns. Um, we've done tons and tons and tons of these, and every one um, has been, uh, has ended up looking like this on this board, but all of those ingredients and the reasons for doing things vary and that comes through the briefing and having great conversations between you and your creatives the other one thing i'll say about our campaigns in a in a box idea is that you can see again that there's lots of different aspects to this if your digital campaigns or if your marketing campaigns go from the brief from the marketing manager to the designer and then that's it i think you're doing it wrong I think what we've learned and what the last few weeks have highlighted with all of my team all over the place, and you know, we've got Rob on the call as an art director, he's in his house over there, we've got Giuseppe in Italy. You know, finding ways to make good things happen has been really important for us. And having everybody's eyes on this board, copywriters, strategists, web team, um, the PR guys, uh, the writers, and, uh, and the email guys that we've got, all of them feeding into it has produced much better results coming out the other end. So now's the time to pull that team back together. If they're furloughed, um, I can't help you there, but maybe have a side conversation. I don't know what the laws are on that. But it's time to get that conversation going. How are we going to effectively work as we come out of this? You're not furloughed anymore, but you're still working from home. Um, and something like this campaign in a box, I think, can really help marketing teams do that now it's one o'clock so i'm going to keep moving on do the right thing um kind of a, a, a quippy statement but now more than ever doing things for the right reasons is important i think there was some research but i could spew off numbers and they wouldn't be accurate but i think we can all agree that um, what the last few months have taught us is, is to maybe be a bit more human to each other. And I think the brands that are doing really well at the moment are seeing that. Now, the cynical among you will call it a brand play. Um, I, I call it doing the right thing. And I think as organisations, we have the opportunity at the moment to not focus purely on immediate return and think about how we're gonna create value for our customers and our community and our staff and everyone within our worlds so that it will give us sustainability long-term. So a, a couple of examples of these would be, um, we launched with our friends at the Solicitors Charity, a one million pound COVID-19 support fund that gives money and support to solicitors that are in trouble. But it's, it's not just about that, it's about giving advice, sharing your time, offering free, uh, webinars, whatever that is. But doing the right thing is something that can really fuel that digital engagement plan. That you've got. And it should be one of the pillars that you're talking about at the moment. Um, indeed, you know, we're seeing even in the media at the moment, there was uh, uh, there's the footballer that's managed to get school meals going as well. He didn't need to do that. He's done the right thing. Has it helped his profile? Yes, it has. Would doing the right thing help your business's profile? Yes, it would. So get on with it. Find something that's going to drive value into your community or into your customer base and, and, and do it. The next point, slightly slow, is, is a really quick win. Um, and it's repackaging yesterday's content for tomorrow. Now, 
We're going to drop again a guide into the chat if you want to read more about this. But um, one thing we noticed when we all carried this computer that um, I'm looking at home from the office, slightly confused and befuddled about what would come next, um, we realized that we needed to find tactics that clients and we could use that would be beneficial but did not need a lot of new creation. So repackaging yesterday's content for tomorrow is an ethos, but practically that can be demonstrated as simply as going back through your analytics and seeing which your most historically what your most popular content was. By looking at your web analytics and seeing what stories generate the most traffic, you can actually repurpose and repackage that content, add conversion elements, and you can keep driving traffic to your website, even without having new news and new things that are going on. So that's one way you can repackage content. Another way is going back into your assets. For instance, we've struggled, we struggled in the first couple of weeks to be able to get out and photograph stuff. Um, but that's fine. Going back through the assets, what a great opportunity to look at what we've got and repurpose some of that. And I don't know if any of you noticed the Bud advert that re ran, which was one of my favorite adverts from the 90s of, you know, what's up? And they re ran that at the beginning, slightly edited. So there's also nostalgia that comes into this as well. But most of all, it's time saving. It just needs some thought. A lot of that content's already there. And it gives you a real practical way of making something positive happen tomorrow. So maybe that's the one for you to try after this session. Using films in new ways and interesting ways. Um, there was, we're a big uh, proponent of, of using films. And all of you of marketeers that I can see down the side are as well. So how do you do that in, in, uh, at the moment? And I think that what we saw was a great opportunity uh, to repackage content, as I've just been talking about, and also using new types of film. I would argue that this is one. Um, you have got the ability in your pocket to make something useful for your business at a starting level. You've got an iPhone is what I was talking about. Okay, So if you take that iPhone, get it out and start thinking about that, then if nothing else, it can help you keep people updated. But thinking about your use of film is key. And the guys at Robin Creative and me had a big chat about this at the beginning. And there was a load of ideas that were put down into the um, document that we shared. So have a good look at that as well. I'm going through them fast, um, but you can download it and you can ask us questions afterwards. But another key area that we saw come out of the early stages, the first couple of weeks, was the need for some of our clients and also some of our collaborators and us with our collaborators to form partnerships and collaborations. Now, we used, in the old days, you say, let's do a media deal and um, we would align you or a sponsorship deal. But I think there's an opportunity for something new here. And these are completely open, zero cost collaborations between brands and between businesses that um, see bottom line gain in working together on either marketing campaigns, big business initiatives. And just Gareth introducing it suddenly made me realize that's exactly what this is. Um, go business leaders down the side, where have we got, let's have a look at who's online. Got people from, we've got Lucy from MPL. Um, go back in there. MPL, great organization. What alliances do you already have? How can we frame those and how can you work together uh, in a collaborative approach um, to maybe do things that you wouldn't be able to do either due to budget or just uh, inertia uh, at the moment? And I think this is a rich seam that, that really fits in with an ethos that I've got coming out and I, maybe you guys do too. Of Maybe we all should work together in a bit more of an open way. Um, so partnerships and collaboration should be on there in your new strategy as something to do. I'm aware of time and being mentioned. Um, employee communications, team communications. Now, what's been amazing is now everybody's an expert on Zoom and, and Teams. Great. And talking to our friends and clients, the ones that are really sticking to that and fighting hard to keep that engagement going, um, it's helping. But let's all be honest with each other, it's tough 
when everyone's disparate and you're not with each other. So with our larger clients, there's been a big move and it's not necessarily stuff we're doing ourselves. Sometimes it's their internal team. Sometimes we're helping them. But effective ongoing conversations with the team and suppliers and anyone that has a uh, stake in the sustainability and success of your business is really important because the difference between 5 and 20% productivity is huge in terms of getting back out there and doing things. So finding ways to keep that conversation going, I think sits within the marketing uh, function. I also think it sits with the business leadership in, in many cases as well. And that can be as simple as an email. Uh, it could be as simple as just getting on a Zoom call and talking to people. Or there are far more complicated things that could be put in place that might derive more value for larger businesses. Um, finding a way of keeping that conversation together and keeping us all together is going to be really important now and in the future. Because if the opinions I'm hearing are anything to go by, it may well be for many of us on this call that we never go back to the way it was um, and the increasingly remote working is a big part of that. So let's put some things in the strategy now that will make sure that you can be as productive as possible with the agencies, the teams, the suppliers, and most importantly, the teams within your, your staff as well. And really that, that brings me on to one of the last points I'm gonna talk about on this bit, which is online events and virtual conferences, what we're in at the moment. Um, a big area, we asked you guys a, a bit of a question earlier, and I've whipped through without referencing back on a couple there. Let me go back to that survey again. The first thing I'll mention about this is strategy and planning, great. You've all agreed that this is something you need to sort out and we've all got to focus on. Um, digital transformation, great, that's high up there as well creating effective digital. So this is really interesting. Um, what's slightly bizarre in considering the group that we've got as a delegation is that replacing face-to-face -face events is somewhat lower. It doesn't completely surprise me. It's part of that digital transformation. But what we found at the beginning um, of, of COVID and what we continue to find is well, we've got a lot of organizations who relied on face-to-face -face events. We're talking about law firms, we're talking about B2B brands, we're talking um, organizations that relied on those events to get their customers. So what do they do and how do they do it now? Before you all rush off and start a Zoom conference, which you probably have already done, a little bit of thought about how you work um, the virtual events back into your strategy would be really important because what you're actually able to do by combining some of the ideas we've talked about before now is change a virtual event to from 15 people with uh, various uh, levels of interest in a subject to very focused pieces of work that um, which derive real value for you and the way we see this developing long term is invest now in virtual events live events will be back but we believe that there's going to be a huge shift towards hybrid because what we found today is we've got uh, an international delegation watching, talking about marketing from Southampton. Brilliant. What a great wide gamut. What we also need is that face-to-face -face bit. So we've been doing some work around hybrid events, which has been quite interesting, and they're going to share uh, further reading on that in the chat. But how are you running those virtual events? Are they working? Is it the same old people coming into them? Or are you finding that you are? generate more and how could you use things like the campaign in a box approach to make sure that you get um, that audience um, recently for one organization we ran a new type of virtual conference as an experiment and rather than doing a one-off it was an event series that every day of the week at a certain time it delivered new content and we found that that sustained people's interest longer and it meant that overall, because all of that was part of their inbound strategy, all of the registrants, whether they went to one, seven or two of these events, of, of these talks, all of that information played back into Marketo, their inbound marketing platform. And we were able then to send them nurturing content that suited what they needed. That's why virtual events are brilliant, because you're able to get the sort of information that I've been 
sharing with you and you, people are more open to engage with that. So it's a big part of that mix. And I think that when we look at what you guys said worried you most, so which of these is your highest priority right now? It's reassuring to know that strategy and planning is up there. I think probably if we asked these questions any other time and had strategy and planning on there, it would probably be quite high from the names I see in there. But you can see that this flow of, of concerns that you guys have got really plays into one solid area. How can we get the idea right, the plan right? How can we deliver that through digital channels effectively? And how can we make sure that we engage um, in a much more uh, digitally focused way? So, so it's great. Now, before I ask, I'm going to ask Gareth to come back in uh, in a moment uh, or now. But before I finish, I just wanted to underline one thing. This is not the be all and end all. You guys out there will have loads of other ideas that fit into this. Some of you might be looking at me going, what the hell is he talking about? Whichever it is, now is the time to do something and get those plans in place. And we hope that the ideas we've shared and, and the time that we have today um, will enable you to do that. So, um, Gareth, if I can uh, ask you to make yourself live again, we'll move forward onto the Q&A. Hello again. Um, so please feel free, now's the time to, to chuck some questions in. Before the event, we, we asked people um, to, to put their questions up before the event, and we got a few back. Um, some of them are quite large questions that we'll try and answer, but, um, but some of them are, are more detailed. So, I mean, the first question, probably one of the bigger ones to kick off with, um, was, do you see marketing changing forever? Has what happened as what happened with COVID meant that marketing will no longer look like what it did in the past? Um, well, and what we kind of react to that is we we were kind of we had conversations with a lot of our clients before this around um, actually people are getting a bit um, tired of of a lot of the digital marketing techniques and and actually some of the offline stuff was working really really well. So we did a campaign for a client of ours, um, the old Bond store. Um, which is a, a, a brilliant new shared um, working environment, um, which was targeting particularly kind of board level people. Um, and we did a, a direct mailer and it actually had a 40 percent response rate. And it was because of how that was delivered and the fact that it was a direct mailer and it was it was um, tactile and people wanted to kind of uh, understand what it was. And there's also a bit of a, a kind of a tease to find out more information on it. So I think. I think what we'll get to is that going back to a place where, um, you know, when people feel a bit more confident that, you know, something coming through the post doesn't have to be disinfected, um, those types of uh, techniques will come back in and, and play a strong role. But I think, you know, in a nutshell, the answer, yes, marketing will change forever. I think the fact that people every day are, are using um, things like Zoom means that we've all had to and become experts in in digital technology and it was a bit scary before all this happened but we're all using it every day so people are more comfortable with that kind of um way of interact interacting with people any any thoughts from your point of view as marketing change forever ed um no it hasn't <laughs> sorry um my view i think i think my view uh, comes back to society uh, go back further has society changed forever um it lots of people say absolutely it has but i would put it to you that society continues to change every year no matter whether you've got covid or otherwise what what seems to have happened is, is an acceleration and has marketing changed forever there's a reason that in the document and in the talk i say back to basics and there's a reason we mentioned the seven p's no <laughs> and you know we've been around 30 years now and people have laughed us out of some meetings uh, five, ten years ago because we're integrated into this old hat. I actually believe now more than ever, an integrated approach that really gets to grips with understanding where your customer base is, is key. And that hasn't changed ever, in my opinion. But the world around us changes, and as marketeers, we need to react to that. And that's usually tactic-based. So webinars, using different tools. And I note that someone said on chat on that subject, we don't, I think they're saying, we don't want it to go back to normal, <laughs> no more new normal. 
so yeah I, I would say kind of but no kind of kind of there's a, a question from paris smith about um what's the best virtual event that you've seen and why um so standards are getting higher and higher um hopefully this is a good example but but you know beyond this what's what's the best one that you've you've seen ed i know you've been involved with a few years <laughs> so, i mean that's a tough question to ask whether it's running a load of virtual events for people so obviously all of our clients <laughs> virtual events are the key um i think that there was one that from a I think B2B ones, I think um, it's been interesting trying to find some space to do something different within those. And we've tried within this, within the questionnaire, in, in any way that you can find some way, it's important. But the, the VTD ones, the virtual test drive series that Hexagon put together, which uh, is a set which I mentioned, um, it was just a different way of doing it and it worked and the results worked. And I think that keeping things short, having a series, and trying to find some something unique in each of those uh, is, is key. How they'll develop in the future, I think, as I talked about, it's mixing in that live element. So that, um, and I think you'll see that on TV as, you know, you, you'll sort of see those two areas merging together. So it's really yeah. interesting. From my point of view with that, the interesting thing was that we, we were all geared up to do a, uh, a big live event in Frankfurt for this client. Um, yeah. obviously, well, that couldn't happen, um, and it was off the back of we did something in in um, in Madrid for them, where they had their global sales team of about five hundred salespeople came into Madrid. We probably didn't do uh, uh, the world of good for spreading COVID, did they? Because they came from all over the world, landed in Madrid for a few days, and um, and all went away. And then we were gearing up for this Frankfurt event, and we had to shift that online. Um, and actually, they had something like 1500 delegates didn't they to this online event that ran over the course of a, a week or so um and it was about i mean it's a really interesting subject virtual test drive and what the future might look like for uh, vehicle automation so big audience but um but being able to shift and actually probably you know it's more environmentally friendly people can dip in and out as they wish cost less for businesses to get their delegates to that it all makes sense and it's um it, it, it's a I think it's that's probably in answer to that earlier question that's probably a really good way that marketing will change forever I can't see face-to-face -face meetings dying off completely but there's now a new way of delivering that at lower cost and a, a, a better result for the environment as well I think that's something that the guys at Smith and Williamson there's no name on that they say we had a strong bias for face-to-face -face events for networking but we're now collaborating with third parties to get online events happening and it's paying dividends so you're seeing um, you're seeing organisations and the, the sectors that traditionally relied on on certain uh, functions of marketing that will have to do more work short term to to change that around. If if 100% of your marketing return is here and 25% of that was face to face events, then you need to take that budget very quickly and find a way of reinvesting it in some other stuff and thinking about how you do that. I think one of the other questions I've noticed from Redwood Advertising here is how can we convince clients to keep strong budgets towards marketing and advertising? Uh, Redwood Advertising, if you know the answer to that, do let me know. Yeah, uh, I'm really uh, all, all that we can do as marketeers is continue what I believe is a fight to, um, in terms of the pecking order of what really matters in a business. And when this started, the FD was number one in the world. Right, we're going to cut... And in our organisation, Gareth, the same thing happened. Right, we're going to cut this cost, we're going to look at this, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do this. But there comes a point when those people can only take you so far. And the people on this call, the advertisers and the marketers, are the people that really take your businesses out and make sure people care about them or even know about them. So in terms of trying to fight for budget, I don't try and fight. What I try and do is say, this is, you know, this is something that you need to do. What proportion of budget are you able to commit towards marketing? And what part of that should be invested in this activity? Because what you'll never win is a fight with the, uh, with the, the, the bottom line. There is only so much money to be had at any time for each function. And while we don't need our offices much at the moment, you know, we'll pay less on cleaning. But at the moment, now, as people start to go back to the shops, we saw in that results that, on the whole, cautious, but we're getting back out there. Um, 
you know, now's the time to spend that money on on creating effective communications. And Gareth, there's a question I'll put to you about that in here, which uh, I've lost, but it was, um, how do you stand out? Yeah, what three tips have you got to ensure you get noticed in a crowd with online activity? Apart I mean, from presenting yeah, the, you know, the best time to do that. I mean, uh, with the, we've been um, talking about not going dark and actually, you know, while, while everyone else goes quiet, now's the best time to start shouting. Um, and there's so, if you're kind of a student of history, there's so much evidence for past recessions. The, the people that spend on uh, marketing advertising now are the ones that come out of it quicker and come out of it better than, than others. I mean, in terms of specifically online, um, it's always a combination of paid, earned and owned. So making sure that your, the stuff that you own, your real estate, your website, your, your own social channels are are as on point as possible so you're, you're hitting it correctly with the content that's on there and your seo um, in terms of what you're doing on your own channels but also the own stuff you're still investing in time for your own pr and making sure that you get those stories out that out there but ultimately you've got to combine that with a bit of paid so um where you're shifting to digital put a bit of money into um ppc google ads google display um, social media advertising and all those things working together and they do need to be considered and that's kind of one of the things Ed was talking about campaign in a box those consider all of those elements so those things working together at a time like now where everyone else has gone quiet then that's the best strategy for for getting out of this very quickly I believe and I, and I think the other thing about paid at the moment so paid when Gareth says that means advertising putting money into advertising and and we very much see that this is a great opportunity to get your owned and earned activity right. But as Gareth says, you do need paid within that mix. And one of the reasons to keep fighting for a little bit of that is it also allows you to get a feedback loop going. So I'll give you a really, uh, a really simple example. Um, a nursery in Winchester is trying to get all of, its, all of its people back, all of its kids back. It needs to fill up. It's on half of the number it needs. Now, by using uh, digital advertising, what we can do is, first of all, we can get the message out there that there's places available now, a very basic piece. But the real value in this is looking at the search volume. How many people are even ready to get their kids back there? And if you don't have elaborate research um, or data, then even just running 600 quid's worth of advertising against a search term can tell you the truth in one given area how much interest is there? And if the truth is there's no interest, do something else to keep in contact with them and work from there. But the, the reason that we are so, we've seen this mixing of activity work time and time again. And it may be that we don't do all of it, but the more, if there's lots of agencies that are on chat, Gareth, because obviously it's a great way as agencies, it's a great way to get your name out there, guys. Well done. But it's we as agencies, have to think about that. And going back to that question of um, budgets and fighting for budgets, the more we can involve ourselves in our clients' challenges and take responsibility for delivering some sort of benefit against that, rather than just selling some design or something else, the more sustainable we'll be as agencies. Just um, one question, just to pick up on, I realize the time, we're coming to the hour mark, but um, uh, Karina at City College, thank you for your question has asked about what's the best platform for, for, for virtual events. And I guess it's, from my point of view, it's, it, it, it depends what the event is. So um, the Hampshire Chamber have been running their events through, uh, through Zoom, um, and they've had a few issues. Early days, they had people who could take control of the camera. So they had some, um, and they, they put the, uh, the link out on, on social media beforehand. So they actually had someone uh, stand up and drop their trousers in the middle of the event, which obviously is not really what you want when you're discussing business strategy. I don't do it. Um, but uh, but so but if you're a, if you get to grips with Zoom, Zoom can really work really well for smaller events. Obviously, there's this platform that Vostrom provided that works well for this kind of thing. You know, the bigger stuff like the VTD event. I think that was Webex, wasn't it? That that was that was yeah. run on. Like with like with everything, so many different platforms. And one of the things that I point people to go to, and Hannah, if you're still online. Drop that link in about, we did a review of the five top platforms. Um, and I think, have a read of that and 
think about size of delegation, what sort of interaction that you need, um, and what sort of event you're trying to create. And if you're still st if you're still stuck, shout. But there's there's all sorts. Of, you can do these very cost effectively. Um, and I would definitely recommend um, having a chat with uh, Sam from Vostrom to see if that works for you as well. But there's obviously a huge amount of businesses who are pushing a huge amount of uh, virtual event technology at the moment. And you really need to sift through that and do your due diligence. So start with the story that we did where we had to do that. Um, uh, good old WebEx has been around for years. It's, um, we used it recently for a, some event, uh, an event for the University of Portsmouth that we ran. It worked okay, but it's a very old code bed, and I'm going to get too geeky now, so I'll stop talking. We'll have to stop the the Q and A now. Thank you. If there are other things, then um, we'll we'll share obviously our uh, email addresses, um, our phone numbers. Please just go on our website and um, and get in contact. We'd love to hear from you. I think Hannah might even have the ability to uh, share a link to our calendars. Uh, and you can book a meeting directly with us as well. So we, we'd love to hear from you and, uh, and carry on the conversation. Obviously, one of the main things that we want to make people aware of is um, is this guide that we've produced. So that's available to download on our website. Um, I can see that a number of you have already. So that's fantastic. Um, and it's free. So, you know, why not? Um, so, yeah, so we, we want to keep the conversation going. We'd love to talk to you. Um, please, um, please get in touch and um, we hope that you found the last hour um, a valuable use of, of your time. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining. Keep going, you're doing great. Um, and thank you from everyone at the Southampton Chamber of Commerce, which is of course the, the host of, of this event um, that we're, um, we're taking part with today. Um, and also another date for your diary. So next week, same time, same place, um, is an interactive session on creative thinking um, with Dave Hall as well. So um, we'll send out the details of that and how to, to book onto that as well. So yeah, thank you very much. Bye everybody. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>